Before we get started, I just want to remind you to be sure to sign up for the 2020 Summer Reading Program. Imagine your story. Our reading program is provided each year to help deter summer learning loss for students and to foster the lifelong love for reading. We've got challenges for everyone in the family. You can read to win prizes. Woo! This year, our program is going all digital. Download the Beanstack app on your mobile device or click virtual summer reading program link on our homepage to register. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Kirby and today we are learning about the Japanese fairy tale Ishun Boshi. So today we will read the story Ishun Boshi and then we will make an Oni mask. If you got a kit from the library, the first thing we're going to do is go through all of the kit items. So if you picked up a kit, you should have two different Oni mask face parts, sheets, a different variety of colored cardstock, a mask, glue, and a popsicle stick. Other things you may be interested in having are colored pencils, crayons, or markers because you may want to color these in. All right, we are going to get started reading the story of Ishun Bashi. Once upon a time, in a country far, far away, there lived a poor farmer and his wife. They had no children but they desperately wanted one. They would sing, We would like a little boy, any size at all. We would like him little. We would like him small. We would like him tiniest of all. As they walked to and from the fields every day, a miracle happened and they had a little boy and he was so tiny. So they called him Ishun Boshi, which means one inch boy. As Ishun Bashi grew up, he became nimble and smart. He was loved by all the country folk for dancing and singing. He helped his parents in the fields and worked hard, and his parents were so happy and loved him very much. By 15, he had not grown at all and was still only one inch. He decided to leave his family and the countryside one day and set out for the city and adventure. His mother gave him a rice bowl that he carried on his shoulders, and his father a needle which he wore on his belt. He was then ready to set off for his adventure. Ishun Boshi traveled long and far through sun and rain, through forests and pastures. He used his rice bowl as a boat in the rivers and his needle for a walking stick. While gathering twigs to build a fire one day, he came across a gigantic misshapen creature that he had never seen before. The creature was known by others as an oni, which was an ogre or demon in Japanese. The oni wanted to make a deal with Ishun Bashi. He wanted him to travel down the stream to a city and go to a nobleman's house to steal a beautiful treasure. If Ishun Bashi brought back the treasure to the Oni, he would use his magic hammer, Ukaida no Kozuhi, which means he who grants wishes, to make him as big as a normal person. Honest and smart, Ishun Bashi told the ogre that he would travel to the city and see the nobleman, but that he would keep his treasure, and that the ogre could keep his hammer and he would stay tiny. As he traveled far down the river, he could hear the Oni's scream of rage. Ishun Bashi arrived in the city and was amazed with its energy. There were so many people and things happening. He had to avoid carts and people almost stepping on him through the hustle and bustle of the busy streets. Ishun Bashi found a wealthy household and shouted for a job, saying, please, please give me a job. I want to work. 
Hearing the noise, the people of the household came running to find a tiny one-inch man. The nobleman asked what he could possibly do, being so tiny. Ishunbashi began to dance and sing and gathered a crowd of people who enjoyed his performance. The nobleman's daughter came out and said that she was bored and wanted to have little Ishunbashi read and sing to her and keep her company. The nobleman, tired from the mess, said yes and hired Ishunbashi. From then on, he followed the daughter around and entertained the young mistress, dancing, singing, and tricks. She was so happy to have a doll that could read and think. Ishunbashi began to think that it would be nice to be normal-sized so that the girl would think of him differently and fall in love with him. One day, the mistress and Ishunbashi went into the forest to play. All of a sudden, the Oni appeared. He thanked Ishunbashi for bringing him his treasure. The Oni then grabbed the girl and ran away. Ishunbashi ran quickly after them and soon caught up. He leapt at the Oni and bit him. The Oni was so annoyed that he put him in his mouth and swallowed him whole. Ishunbashi was so mad that he stabbed and slashed at the Oni's insides with his needle. No organ was spared, not his throat, stomach, kidneys, or liver. The monster was in so much pain that he folded over and threw Ishan Boshi back up. Ishun Boshi grabbed the magic hammer from the Oni on his way out and grew and grew and grew. He became a tall and strong man who was raging with anger. The young mistress was amazed and the Oni was cowering in fear. Without his hammer, he was scared for his life and ran away. The nobleman's daughter fell in love with Ishun Boshi and they got married and continued to live a happy life together. People say they can still find the monster in the forest trying to heal his wounds. All right, the next thing we're gonna work on is making our very own Oni mask. From these pictures, you can see that they tend to have very enunciated features. They have big cheekbones, big eyebrows. They tend to have horns or uh, tusked teeth. We are going to make our own Oni mask today. And what you'll need is your mask. You received glue and a stick when you want to use it. You've also received your construction paper that you can use if you'd like and your face parts. Now, other things you may want and need are scissors so you, that you can cut out your face parts. You can also use markers or crayons if you want to color your face parts. Otherwise, you could use your construction paper to make your own face parts or to just cover the entire mask and then color your face parts differently. So, there are two different face part sheets. This one is a little less traditional, so these have more whimsical or funny things on here, like these big eyes or this bumpy nose or the unicorn horn or these mustaches. Now, this is a tongue, there's some more horns, and there's some things. Otherwise, we have this Oni mask sheet. This is more traditional, this is a more traditional mouth. These noses right here and right here are more traditional. There's some chins that are traditional. These can go on the head, or you can have them be eyes, but Onis tend to have a horn or something right in the middle of their forehead. These are some big eyebrows and here's some other big eyebrows. So you can do what you want with them. You can have it be more funny or you can have it be more traditional, whatever you'd like. I'm going to get started with mine so that you can see my example. 
Here's my mask. I think I'm going to try a more traditional Oni mask. So I'm gonna cut out these big eyebrows and I think I'm gonna use this mouth and this nose and these eyes and maybe these big horns. So I'm gonna cut those out and then we'll go on from there. So I have all my pieces cut out now and I've sort of arranged them how I would like them to go on my mask. I have colored my mask. I used crayons, you could use paint, you can use your cardstock if you want to use your cardstock and just fully cover the mask. However you'd like to do it. I wanted to try using crayons first because I didn't want two different colors on my mask for right now. And then now that I've set up the face, I'm going to start thinking about what colors I'd like the stuff to be and maybe plan to rearrange it on to the mask. So you can see I've arranged my stuff on the mask and I think I'm going to color a few of them just to brighten it up. Maybe put some red on the lips and do some teal on the nose and maybe color in the eyebrows. Keep in mind when you're using your eyes you can either poke holes in them or you can leave a portion of the eye open so that you can see out of the mask when you use it. I am going to get started on all of that. And then we'll come back and glue everything together. I think I have everything colored the way I like. I used the horn to trace it out and to make horns with the colored paper because I thought that would be fun and vibrant. So now I'm ready to start gluing. So I have my little popsicle stick and my glue and you can just get started however you like gluing down your items if you're using the pieces themselves from the mouth parts and the face parts or if you're using the cardstock. First thing I'm going to glue on is my nose and I'm going to have it a little lower just so that you can't see the nostril holes underneath. And you can really shape it to fit the mask if you'd like. So there is my nose. Once I finish gluing everything on, this is what my Oni mask looks like when I am finished. You can make yours however you like. Now that you guys have your Oni masks done, you can feel free to recreate your own Ishonbashi story for your families. I hope you had a blast and I hope you learned about a Japanese folktale you might not have known. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you next time. Bye.